Chapter 2. The Big Ideas in Isaiah Isaiah's whole message is a work contrasting God's judgment and divine hope. On one hand, God warns the people of the dangers of breaking their covenant with the Lord by pursuing injustice and idolatry. Now, the dangers of idolatry are about more than God getting angry because we have decided to worship someone or something other than Him. What we worship has a way of shaping us, and the human community becomes distorted whenever we put anything other than the Lord at the center. Sometimes it takes several generations to begin noticing the distortion, but it always happens. Money, military power, national pride, radical individualism, racial identity, to name but a few examples, begin to worship and break down the fabric of a society. It is helpful to think of Isaiah as having two halves of one book. In in Isaiah chapters 1 through 39, the primary focus is on warning Israel of the coming judgment that will take place if the people continue to pursue wickedness. God will use the nations of Assyria and Babylon to execute justice on his people. Yet, even this judgment does not preclude hope. One day, God will fulfill all of his covenant promises. He will raise up an anointed king to lead his people, and this anointed king will enable his people to keep their covenant with God and to place the Torah within their hearts. Chapters 1 through 39 can be divided into three sections, which lead to the climax of the book's first half, which is the fall of Jerusalem at the hands of the Babylonians. In chapters 1 through 12, the corruption of Judah will lead to her being conquered and destroyed. This destruction will be like a purifying fire, and from out of the ashes a new Jerusalem will arise, ushering in an age of worldwide peace and holiness. At the heart of this section is Isaiah's encounter with God in the temple. This encounter causes Isaiah to realize just how sinful and unfit he is for a life with God. Then, an angel of the Lord takes a burning coal from the altar and touches Isaiah's mouth, cleansing him and making him holy. Like the purifying fire from which New Jerusalem will arise, the burning coal is not meant to destroy or harm Isaiah, but to make him whole. Isaiah is then commissioned as a prophet to the nations. Yet, to his surprise, Isaiah is told that the people are not going to listen to him. Instead, they will resist Isaiah's message and become even more rebellious, bringing destruction and ruin upon themselves and their children. The nation will then be destroyed and will end up looking like a raised forest. The dynasty of David will be like a great oak stump that has been sawn down. The surviving stump will be charred with fire. But Isaiah must trust God through all of this, because from this fallen dynasty, the long-awaited Messianic king will come, growing up like a green shoot from the burnt-out stump. He will usher in God's kingdom and the renewal of all creation. Chapters 13 through 27. Isaiah could see that the Assyrian Empire would be replaced with an even stronger, more arrogant empire, the Babylonian Empire. Their ruler would exalt himself above all gods, bringing upon himself and his empire the judgment of the Lord. But Isaiah goes on to predict the fall and ruin of every nation that is found guilty of arrogance, brutality, and injustice. But justice is never the final word. Chapters 24 through 27. In these chapters, we find the tale of two cities. One is a city of wickedness and injustice which has lifted itself above the gods, this city represents humanity in rebellions, rebellion against God. This city will eventually fall and be replaced by a new Jerusalem, where God reigns over all of humankind, and in which there is no more sin, death, or sorrow. Isaiah urges his readers to put their trust in the Lord. This vision is played out in the story of Hezekiah. The Assyrians lay siege to Jerusalem during his reign. Hezekiah humbles himself and leads Uh, and begs the Lord for deliverance. God responds by delivering the city. 
but Hezekiah's rise in faith is followed by his fall. King Hezekiah hosts a delegation from Babylon. To impress them, and in order to negotiate a political alliance with them, Hezekiah shows them all the secret wealth of the nation. Isaiah confronts the king, telling him that his new ally will betray him, returning one day to destroy Jerusalem. This feat is accomplished about a century later, but judgment is meant to cleanse and purify Jerusalem. From out of a purified Jerusalem will come the Messianic king, who will be the hope to the nations. Chapters 40 through 66 explore the idea of this messianic hope. In chapters 40 through 48, these chapters bring a word of hope and deliverance for Israel. These chapters announce the end of the Babylonian exile, calling the people to return home, where they will see the glory of God and the coming of his reign. The prophetic hope is that having experienced justice and mercy from God, His people will respond by becoming his servant, by sharing with the nations the good news of all that God has done. Sadly, the people respond to this announcement by complaining and accusing God of not caring about them, wondering whether or not God is able to really keep his promises to them. Chapters 41 through 47 provide God's answer to these accusations. The first part of the answer is that the exile was not a divine failure or a sign of God's neglect. The exile was orchestrated by God as a judgment on Israel's sins. For the sake of his people, God raised up the Persian Empire to conquer the Babylonians so that the people could return to their homeland. In the fall of Babylon and the rise of Persia, the people are meant to see the, the, the hand of God at work in history and to realize that he is sovereign over all the nations. Chapter 48. Instead of responding to God by offering themselves to be his servant, we see the people are just as stubborn and disobedient as their ancestors ever were. Yet God is still committed to using Israel as his instrument to bless and transform the nations. Seeing the stubbornness of his people, God is going to do a new thing. Chapters 49 through 55. God's servant is going to fulfill God's mission to do what Israel failed to do. This servant is given the title Israel. He is going to restore the Hebrew people back to God and to be a light to all the other nations. The Spirit of God will enable the servant to accomplish all of this. Isaiah then reveals the shocking way the servant is going to bring about salvation. He is going to suffer and die for the sins of the people, making atonement by his death. Chapter 53, verses 10 through 12. The death of the servant makes the people righteous. Some people respond to what he does by giving humble praise to God. These are called the servants or the holy offspring. Others, called the wicked, reject both the servant and his servants. Suddenly, no sooner than we see the servant die, he is now alive somehow. Chapters 56 through 60. The servants will inherit the Messianic kingdom. Chapter 60 through 62. The spirit-anointed servant announces the good news of the kingdom. The servant reaffirms all the promises found throughout the book of Isaiah. Chapters 59 and chapter 63 through 64. These chapters contain the prayers of repentance, where the people of God grieve over their sins and their evil ways. They ask God to bring about his reign on earth, even as it is in heaven. Chapters 56 through 58 contain prayers that contrast the servants and the wicked. God will judge all who ruin and pollute his good creation. God will remove them from the new Jerusalem. The servants who repent and acknowledge their sins will inherit the new Jerusalem, which is what we find uh, ends up encompassing the entire world and not just a plot in Israel. The whole world is renewed by God's grace. In this new age, death, sin, and suffering are gone forever. Chapters 56a through 66b. In these partial chapters, 
all of the people of the world are invited to be a part of this new creation. These chapters reflect each other and are best read together. I recommend reading 60 and then reading 62, reading chapter 59 and then reading 63 through 64, reading 56b through 58 and then 65 through 66a and then finally read 56a and 66b. In these chapters, we read about the justice of God, which prepares people for the Messianic kingdom. He brings, the, the Messiah, he brings about deliverance and the hope of the world, ushering in a new age in which all of creation is restored and all people are invited to partake. The Messianic king creates a people for himself who are freed from their sins and who, by the grace of God, become holy and capable of enjoying God's new world. We'll conclude this video with a story from the Desert Fathers. Abba Lot went to see Abba Joseph. He said to him, I say my regular prayers. I fast a little. I pray and meditate. I live in peace as far as I can and purify my thoughts. What else can I do? The old man stood up, stretched out his hands towards heaven. As he did, his fingers became like ten lamps of fire. And he said to Avalot, If you will, you can become all flame.